Tonight's topic, we're going to be dealing with, um, it's a topic that will never grow old. It's not marriage, but it's a topic with regards to our sons and our daughters, the teenagers. So to the teenagers, today is your day, okay? Um, tonight's topic is called dealing with monstrous kids, dealing with monstrous and evil children. That's tonight's topic, okay? Um, let's open up with the book of Psalms. Give me Psalms 127, verse 3. Psalms 127 and verse 3. Psalm chapter 127, verse 3. Lo, children are in heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. Okay, I need some power in this thing. Okay, read verse 3 again. Psalm chapter 127, verse 3. Lo, children are in heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. So the Lord is teaching us that children are an inheritance of the Lord. They are a heritage of the Lord because they are the ones that are going to continue the next, they're going to continue in the next generation to continue the testimonies of the Lord. You understand? As the, the fruit of the womb is his reward. The fruit of the womb is the children. You understand? But he's not talking about monsters and evil kids. He's talking about children that are upright. Children that obey their parents, children that keep God's commandments. You understand? That's the children that are a fruit of the womb. Those are the children that is a reward of the fruit of the womb. Monsters and evil children, they are not a reward. They are evil and they need to be put down. We're going to read the scriptures. Okay, watch this. Jump down to verse 5 now. Read that thing. Verse 5. Psalms chapter 127, verse 5. Mm -hmm. Happy is the man that hath his quiver full of them. Read. They, they shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies in the gate. You see what he's saying? He's as happy as the man that has his quiver full of them. Meaning full of them is the children. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies in the gate. Meaning these children are going to be built up and raised up in the law. And guess what? They'll be able to deal with our enemies. You understand? Because at the gate, that's where you find the leadership of Israel. Okay? Watch this. Give me Proverbs chapter... No, give me Psalm 78. Let's start at verse 1. Psalm 78 verse 1. Psalm chapter 78 verse 1. Mm -hmm. Give ear, O my people, to my law. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. The words of the Lord's mouth is this life. The Lord is commanding us, he says, incline your ears to the words of my mouth. Because as a people, we are dull of hearing. That's why he's commanding us to incline our ears to the words of his mouth, which is the law. Read. Right? I will open my mouth in a parable. Mm -hmm. I will utter dark sayings of old. So the Lord says he will utter dark sayings of old. Read on. Watch this. Which we have heard and known. And our fathers have told us. You see what he's saying? Which we have heard and known. And our fathers have told us because it's the job of the fathers to teach the children God's commandments, to raise them up in the law. You understand? That's why it says, which we have heard and known, and our fathers have told us. All this, let's go to the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 31. Hmm. Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 12. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 12. Mm -hmm. Gather the people together. Men and women and children. And what? And they and children. And children. It says gather the people together, men, women, and children. And children. Okay? Read that part again. Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 12. Gather the people together, men, women, men and women, and children, and thy stranger that is within thy gates. Read. That they may hear. That they may what? That they may hear. That they may hear. That they may hear. Because what our fathers did, our forefathers taught the laws of God. They taught the laws to all Israel. So to the men, meaning the fathers, women, the mothers, and the children. That they may hear. You understand? That's what's going on now. That's what we are doing this day. You understand? All this, go back to Psalm 78. Verse 3 again. Psalm chapter 78, verse 3. Come on. Which we have heard and known. Mm -hmm. Come on. 
and our fathers have told us. You see that thing which we have heard and known, and our fathers have told us, meaning they have taught us. Okay, so what we are reading in Deuteronomy 31, that's exactly what Moses is doing. Moses was a father. You understand? He may he was commanded of the Lord to make sure that men, women, and children hear the word of God and know the word of God and apply it to their lives. Okay, go back to Deuteronomy 31, verse 12 now. Again, you know what? Start at verse 11. Start at verse 11. Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 11. Mm -hmm. When all Israel is come to appear before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose, mm -hmm. thou shalt read this law before all Israel in their hearing. You see what he's saying? Thou shalt read this law, not true love magazine, okay? Not Latu. No, 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 no. Thou shalt read this law, the law, the Bible. You shall read the Bible before all Israel in their hearing. That's what our forefathers did. You understand? That's what the Moses had commanded that the children know. They must hear and learn the law and apply it and know it. You understand? Come on. Verse 12. Gather the people together, men and women and children, and thy stranger that is within thy gates, that they may hear and that they may learn. You see that thing? And fear that they may hear and that they may learn. They must hear the word of God being read to them or taught to them. Okay? That they may learn, commit it to memory and apply it. You understand? Read on. And fear the Lord your God and observe to do all the words of this law. So the reason why they're supposed to hear and learn is so that they can fear the Lord their God. Because today children don't fear the most like God. They don't fear God because the parents don't fear God. Why? Because the parents don't teach their children God's commandments. They don't teach that God kills. God doesn't love you no matter what. No. The most high God put children to death that are disrespectful and disobedient. Okay, come on. Verse 13. And that their children, which have not known anything. You see that thing? That is the key hear. right there. The key is that there are children which have not known anything. Because children don't know nothing. The children do not know anything. They need to be taught God's commandments. From the moment they are born until they die, they need to be in the laws of God. You understand? If they go outside of God's commandments, that's when sin enters in. That's when death and destruction comes in. Okay? Read that again, verse 13. Deuteronomy chapter 12, chapter 31, verse 13. And that their children, which have not known anything, may hear and learn to fear the Lord your God, as long as ye live in the land, whether ye go over Jordan to possess it. You see that thing right there? So that means what? The children must be taught God's commandments. 24-7, they must be what? They must be in the law. They must be in the law. Go back to Psalms now, 78 verse 3 again. Psalms 78 verse 3. Mm -hmm. Which we have heard and known, and our fathers have told us. Because that's the job of the fathers to do that thing. The fathers, they teach, the, they, they keep the commandment, they teach the wife, the wife teaches the children. That's the order. Come on. We will not hide them from, our, from their children. We will not hide them from their children. Meaning what? When you don't teach God's commandments to your children, you are hiding the laws of God from your children. Because instead of teaching our, the children the laws of God, what is our, our brothers and sisters doing out there? What is the mother doing out there? What is the father doing out there? They buy their children tablets. They buy their children smartphones. They buy their children uh, you know, Xboxes and PS3s. You understand? That's how they, sh they think they're showing their children love. No. You must buy your child the Bible. Okay, sell the Xbox, sell the game, buy a Bible. Let your child sit down and read this book and apply that which is written. That is the job of a father, the job of a parent. Okay, read that again. Verse 4. Psalms chapter 78, verse 4. We will not hide them from their children, showing to the generation to come the praises of the Lord mm -hmm. and his strength. And his wonderful works that he had done. 
So that is the job, that is the reason why we're supposed to make sure that we don't hide the laws of God from our children. It's a showing to the generations to come the praises of the Lord, meaning the, the, the children after them, they must know the praises of the Lord, you understand, and his sin and his wonderful work that he has done. That is what our children need to know. Our children don't need to know nothing about Superman. They don't need to know nothing about Spider-Man. You understand? They need, they need to know nothing about Wolverine. Our children must know God's commandments and the things that the Lord did for us. When we left Egypt, you understand? When the Lord delivered us out of the hands of the Assyrians, out of the hands of the Greeks, out of the hands of the, the Romans, you understand? Our children need to know that thing. Okay? Because that's their history. That's how they're going to see how glorious the Lord is. And they're going to put their hope in the Lord. Okay, come on. For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children. The book of Psalm, chapter 78, verse 5. For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children. So the Lord, the Most High God, he established a testimony in Jacob, not in all nations, a testimony in Jacob, which is the 12 tribes of Israel, and appointed a law in Israel. That is what was appointed to us. The Most High God appointed unto us a law, law and order, how to, how to govern ourselves, how to order our families, how to raise our children according to the law which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children. That's why read verse, um, read verse 4 again, read verse 4. Book of Psalms, chapter 78, verse 4. Come on. We will not hide them from their children. You see that thing? We will not hide them from their children. That's why go back to verse 5 again now. Verse 5. For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children. You see that thing? Our, the fathers are supposed to make known the laws of God to their children. That's why he's saying we will not hide them from their children. Okay, come on, verse 6. That the generation to come might know them, even the children which should be born, mm -hmm. who should arise and declare them to their children. So now the children that are now, their job is to learn this Bible and apply it and follow command that their ch the children that they're going to have, they also will be raised up in God's command. That is the key here. You understand? Come on. That they might set their hope in God mm -hmm. and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. You see that thing? That is the key, that they might set their hope, meaning their faith. Their faith must be in the Lord. Their faith must not be in the TV. Their faith must not be in soccer, in, 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 in pirates or chiefs or sundown. Because that's what's going on today. Our children, that they put their hope in soccer. When they're supposed to put their hope in the law. They are put their hope in joining gang. They put their hope in what? In, um, in, in, in teenage pregnancy. You understand? In peer pressure. They put their hope in that thing. They put their, their hope in disrespecting the parents. That is the hope our children have today. That's why they are monsters. Because when they don't get what they want, guess what they do? They beat their chief, they beat their mothers and fathers. They kill their mothers and fathers. You understand? Why? Because they are not being taught God's command. Read verse 8 again. The book of Psalms, chapter 78, verse no, 8. No. I'm sorry, read verse 7. Read verse verse seven. 7 again. Uh -huh. Book of Psalms, 78, verse 7. That they might set their hope in God and not forget the works of God but keep his commandments. But keep his commandments. I need you to jump back up to verse 5 again. Verse 5. For he established a testimony in Jacob mm -hmm. and appointed a law in Israel, Wait. which he, he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children. Now watch this. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4. Fathers are commanded to teach their children God's commandments. Okay, watch this. Psalm chapter 6, I mean, Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4. Read that. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verse 4. Mm -hmm. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Read. 
and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. So this is a commandment. This is the commandment that have to do with the Most High. You understand? Love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. That is what Christ is saying in Matthew 22. Come on. Verse 6. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. Meaning shall be in your mind. The only way they're going to be in your mind is to apply. Come on. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. It says, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. Meaning what? You have to be creative when it comes to the laws of God, when it pertains to your children. You need to give them scenarios. You need to be able to ask them questions based on the events that are going on around them. And if they are watching TV, whether it's whatever, something educational, they need to be able to know, okay? If somebody is stealing on TV, they need to be able to know where to go in the scriptures to see what does the law say about that. You understand? You put your keys on the table somewhere or you leave your phone on the table, your child comes and takes it, that's stealing because they never ask for it. They never ask for it. You understand? So now, they need, you need to be able to what? Correct and reprove them and show them, listen, this, you are breaking the commandment. That's not yours. That don't belong to you. What law are you breaking? They need to be able to see. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not covet. You understand? They need to know stuff like that. So you need to be able to teach them diligently. You have to be creative. Okay? Read that again. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verse 7. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, mm -hmm. and shalt talk to them when thou sittest in thy house. Thou shalt what? Thou shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house. So you, you, must talk, you must talk about the laws of God when you're sitting in your house. You mustn't be watching generations who are going through the Bible. No. Sit down with your children, okay? Whether it's, 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 the children, it's your children or whether it's your, it's your sisters or your cousins, whatever, your nieces and all that, that, those are your children, okay? It says, you shall talk of them when thou sittest in thine house. When you sit down with your children, the conversation must be about God's commandments. You understand? Based on their conduct and based on things they must watch out for. And they must use the scriptures to be able to make decisions in their life. You understand? You know? And when thou walkest by the way. When thou walkest by the way, you go to the shop. You are going to the mall. You are in the taxi. That's what you must be conversating with your children about. You understand? If you've got a boy. If you got a son, your job is to be able to what? To make sure that your, 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 your son must know what a whore looks like. Your son must be able to know that's a whore right there. You see how she dressed? She's wearing pants. She's wearing mini skirts. Her cleavage is out. That's a whore right there. We've got a daughter. You look at, the, you look at, the, you look at a boy. You look at a, a so-called man. You look at him and say, okay, he's got blonde hair. Okay, he's wearing tight pants. That's the effeminate brother, that's the gay man right there. He's not a man. You understand? His, his pants are sagging, he's smoking weed. That's not a man. That's a nigga. You understand? Your daughters must know these things. They need to be able to know the man according to the Bible. The daughters, the, the sons must also be able to know the woman, the righteous woman according to the Bible, and vice versa. And that can only happen if you sit down with your children and what? You explain these things to them. Whether you are sitting down in the house, when you go to the shop, you must be that's the conversation to make sure that they rehearse them in their steps. Okay, come on. And when thou liest down. When the, you go to sleep. So, you know, um, in the world, when you watch movies and all of that, they have bedtime stories. The bedtime stories, they be reading Cinderella. They be reading whatever. Okay, Bari and whatever. No, no. Mm -mm. You sit down, you go over the history. With, with, with your children. You understand how the Lord delivered us out of Egypt. The plague of Egypt. You understand the exodus out of Egypt. That's what you must show your children. How the Lord delivered us out of Persia. Out of the hands of the Greeks and so forth. You must be able, that's the history they must know. You understand? Come on. And when thou risest up. When they wake up in the morning, you sit down with your children. They must understand the Lord. You must go over them. You must go over the scriptures with them. You understand? So it's a whole package. This is the deluxe package that the Lord has given to the father and mother. Not the GSTV deluxe package or the premium. Mm -mm. This is the real, the true deluxe package right here. 
You teach your children and tell them in order according to the Bible. Whether they are sleeping, whether they are before they sleep, when they wake up, when you're sitting down, when you're walking with them, by the way, the conversation must be about God's law. Watch this. Give me the book of Philippians 1, verse 27. The book of Philippians, chapter 1, verse 27. Great. Only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ. You see that thing? It says only, only, only. It's very specific. Only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ. The things you talk about must be about this Bible. Whatever something happening in the world, use the Bible to relate, relate it to the Bible. Where can you go to actually make, make what you are seeing in the world to come to life? You bring the Bible to life, the scriptures. Whether it's the corona, whether it's the gang, whether it's the rape, whether it's the teenage pregnancy, whether it's the STD, whether it's the HIV, all of that. You must use the scriptures to be able to explain what's going on in the world. That's why it says, only let your conversation be as it become as the gospel of Christ. Yeah, that's a commandment. That's not a suggestion. Read on. That whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs mm -hmm. that ye stand fast in one spirit with one mind striving together for the faith of the gospel. You see that thing? That's the key right there. Whether, whether we are among you, because right now when we are among each other, everybody's on their best behavior. The, the challenge comes in. Now the true test comes in when you are by yourself. When you're not among the brethren, when you're not among the brothers and sisters, that's when now we're going to see if you really apply what is written. If you're going to stand for the gospel or not. You understand? Now watch this. Give me the book of Proverbs now. Give me Proverbs 22 verse 15. Proverbs chapter 22 verse 15. Because the most I commanded us to teach our children God's commandments. Okay? When, and he's explaining to us. He's giving us the blueprint on when it must be done. All the time. You understand? Whatever opportunity you find. Use every opportunity to make sure that the children know the laws of God. Okay? Proverbs 22, verse 15. Watch this. The book of Proverbs, chapter 22, verse 15. Mm -hmm. Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction shall drive it far from him. So now, what, what the Lord is really teaching us is that, hmm, watch this. Could you read verse 6? Then we're going to jump down. Read verse 6 for me. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6. Mm -hmm. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. You see when it says train up a child in the way in which he should go, the way in which that child must go is the laws of God. The way you train him is what we read in Deuteronomy chapter 6. The way you train the child, you teach him when thou liest down, when thou sittest, when thou sittest in thine house, when thou lies down when thou rises up, when thou walkest by the way. That's when that's the time you're supposed to teach him. That's how you train him up or her up. You, the, when you do it 24-7, when they grow older, they're not going to depart from those ways. You understand? Jump down to the 15 now. Proverbs 22, verse 15. Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, mm -hmm. but the rod of correction shall drive it far from him. So I'm going to deal with the first part of that verse. It says, foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. Foolishness. Give me that in 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 13, verse 13. Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. Watch this. 1 Samuel chapter 13, verse 13. Mm -hmm. And Samuel said to Saul, Thou hast done foolishly. What did he do? Thou has done foolishly. Thou has done foolishly. So the foolishness is going to be explained here. Come on. Thou has not kept the commandment of the Lord thy God, which he commanded thee. You see that thing? Thou has not kept the commandment of the Lord thy God, which he commanded thee. So the foolishness is sin. Because when you're not keeping God's commandment, what is that called? A sin. 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 The breaking of God's law. Sin. So when we go back to Proverbs now, 22 verse 15, read that. Proverbs chapter 22 verse 15. Mm -hmm. Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. Stop right there. Foolishness, sin, sin is bound in the heart of a child. That's what the Lord is telling you. The child can be cute. Listen, they're the devil, the Bible speaks of. 
Your job is to make sure that you drive those demons out. Just because they look cute, that don't mean nothing. The boy can be cute, the child, don't, that don't mean nothing in the sight of the Most High. Because the Bible is telling you, it says foolishness, which is sin, is bound in the heart of that child. That daughter, that son, you understand? Is bound in their mind. Meaning you cannot separate sin from them. Your job is to drive it out. That's why it says, but the rod of correction shall drive it far from him. We're going to deal with that later on. Okay, give me Genesis 8, verse 21. Genesis chapter 8, verse 21. Genesis chapter 8, verse 21. Mm -hmm. And the Lord smelled a sweet savor. And the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground anymore for men's sake. Wait. For the imagination Come on. of a man's heart is evil from his youth. What did he say? For the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. You see what the Lord is saying? It says, for the, because the imagination of man's heart, the imagination of man's mind is evil from his youth. From the time they pop out of their mother's womb, evil. Your job is to drive the evil out. That foolishness is bound with them from the moment they are born. You understand? That foolishness is bound with them. Your job is to recognize the evil, know, know that the evil is there, recognize it, purge it up. You have to force it out. You have to sit on them. If you don't sit on a child, you, don't, you have to sit on their neck. You have to sit on their behind until the evil is gone. Because if you don't, that evil will destroy them. Before it destroys the, 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 before the evil destroys them, it's going to infect everybody in the house. You understand? Read that part again. For the imagination. For the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Mm -hmm. Neither will I again smite any more everything living as I have done. Watch this. Give me the book of Ecclesiastes now, chapter 9, verse 3. Let me show you how deep this goes, okay? It says, the imagination of man's heart is evil. Evil from his youth, okay? From a child. Ecclesiastes 9, verse 3. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 3. Mm -hmm. This is an evil among all things that are done under the sun. Come on. That there is no, that there is one event unto all. Mm -hmm. Yea, also the heart of the sons of men is full of evil. Is what? Is full of evil. You see, it's not saying half evil. No, no. It says also the heart of the sons of men is full of evil. When you pour water into a glass it, and you, you make sure that the glass is full, it's full to the brim. That's the level of evil the Lord says is found in the heart of the child. Full of evil. Okay, come on. And madness is in their heart while they live. Mm -hmm. And after that, they go to the dead. You see that thing? And madness is in their heart. Craziness is in their heart. You ever seen these children, these children today, the way they behave? Very disrespectful to the elders. They're very disrespectful to their uncle, to their brother, to their sister. Very disrespectful. You say something, they, 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 they feel they need to say something back. You correct them, say, don't do that, don't do that. They feel they need to respond. You understand? We didn't get that when we were growing up. If you felt they need to respond, you got the beat down. Today, the children, they don't get beat down. By the way, the Lord says we must beat the children. Understand that? That's how you're going to drive the evil out of their mind. You must give them the beat. That's what the Lord is commanding the men and the women too. Okay? Because women tend to play with their children. You understand? They feel sorry for them. Mm -mm. They must get the beat. Okay? Read verse 3 again. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 3. Come on. This is an evil among all things that are done under the sun, mm -hmm. that there is one event unto all. Come on. Yea, also the heart of the sons of men is full of evil, and madness is in their heart while they live. Mm -hmm. And after that, they go to the dead. You see that thing? Give me Proverbs chapter 20, verse 11. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 11. Proverbs chapter 20. Verse 11. Mm -hmm. Even a child is known by his doings. 
whether his work be pure and whether it be right. You see what the Lord is saying? Is that the child is known by his doing. Meaning what? You can tell just by the child the way they behave, what type of person they are and what type of person they will become. You can tell that the demon right there. You can tell that one when they grow up, they are going to be righteous. You can tell because you are growing, they are growing in the law. It says a child is known by their doing. You can tell that thing. Okay? So your job is to recognize the evil and push it out. You need to tell that don't play with the child. Don't be playing with these teenagers. Okay? If you play with these teenagers, guess what they're going to be doing? You're going to be involving them in their evil. And they're going to continue because they're going to think, no, no, don't nobody can tell me nothing. I do whatever I want. Mm -mm. They need to be what? You need to sit on their behind. That's the only way they're going to get right. You understand? Verse 11 again. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 11. Mm -hmm. Even a child is known by his doings, whether his work be pure and whether it be right. Now watch this. Go back to Proverbs 22 now, verse 15. Proverbs 22, verse 15. Book of Proverbs, chapter 22, verse 15. Mm -hmm. Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction shall drive it far from him. You see, that's the part I want to deal with now. It says, but the rod of correction shall drive it far from him or her. Because you understand that foolishness, sin, evil is bound in the mind of that child. Your job is to use the rod of correction to drive that evil out of their spirit. You understand? And it's a daily thing. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 7 tells you exactly how you must do it. And when? All the time. You understand? Don't give them a break. Always make sure that you sit on their behind all the time until they get, until they get it, until it registers in their mind. Okay? Watch this. Read that part again. It says, but the rod but the rod of correction shall drive it far from him. Let's deal with the rod of correction because first and foremost, the rod of correction is this Bible. Give me, give me Psalm chapter 23, verse 4. Psalm 23, verse 4. The book of Psalms, chapter 23, verse 4. Mm -hmm. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, mm -hmm. for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. So thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. The rod of the Lord and the staff of the Lord is what gives us comfort. Because the rod is a stick. It's used for correction. Okay, the staff is used for support. That's what's supposed to comfort us. All right? Watch this. Give me Romans 15 verse 4. It says, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Today, we're not going to deal with the staff so much. We're going to deal with the rod. Okay? Romans chapter 15 verse 4. The book of Romans, chapter 15, verse 4. Mm -hmm. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, mm -hmm. that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So that rod of correction, that rod of correction, which is what David is talking about here, is what? Is the Bible, the scriptures, comfort of the scriptures. The scriptures is what's going to what? Is what's going to correct the child. You understand? First and foremost. Okay, the, the, the Bible, the scriptures, the law. Watch this. Give me Proverbs 29. Proverbs 29, verse 15. The book of Proverbs, chapter 29, verse 15. Mm -hmm. The rod and reproof give wisdom. Mm -hmm. But a child left to himself bringeth his mother to shame. He says, the rod and reproof give wisdom. The rod is the Bible. Okay, the rod is the Bible. It says the rod, read that part again. Let me catch it. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 15. Mm -hmm. The rod and reproof give wisdom. But a child left to himself bringeth his mother to shame. So now the second part of understanding of the rod is talk about what? Tuba, the stick, shambok. You understand? That's what this is going into. The rod and reprove, give wisdom. Guess what? You need to beat them with a stick, okay? And reprove, you tell them why you are doing it. That's the reprove right there. You must give them the beat down and tell them why they are getting the beat down. They need to know why, why, why this is happening to them. That's why the Lord says, the rod and reprove, give wisdom. 
Because if you smack them with a stick, okay, and you tell them why they are doing it, guess what's going to enter into their mind? Wisdom. Because they're going to fear what's going to happen the next time. You understand? Read that again, verse 15. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 15. Mm -hmm. The rod and reproof give wisdom, but a child left to himself bringeth his mother to shame. So we're going to deal with that last part later on when it says, but a child left to himself bringeth his mother to shame. The rod and reproof give wisdom. Give me Proverbs 23 now, verse 13. Proverbs 23, verse 13. Watch this. This is how you suppose. This is, you remember the scripture says, the rod is for correction. You understand? It's used for correction. Now, the Lord is going to teach us what must, how must we do it? Because the Lord in the Bible, you'll never read about the timeout that the child is giving is getting a timeout. The child is getting a curfew. You understand? Mm -mm, no. There's no such in the Bible. That's what white people do. No, he's getting a curfew, what, what do they call it? All that, you know, um, uh, he's, he's, been de he's in detention. That's what they do it in the new schools now detention. You know, when we were going at school, when I was in high school and primary, we got the beat down. You understand? You'll be lining up. You understand? The teacher will be having this long stick. You get the beat down of your life. You understand? There was no time out when we were going to high school. There was no time out when we were in primary. Never. Okay? Read that. Proverbs 23 verse 13. The book of Proverbs, chapter 23, verse 13. Come on. Withhold not correction from the child. Mm -hmm. For if thou beatest him with the rod, he shall not die. Read that part again. For if thou what? For if thou beatest him with the rod, mm -hmm. he shall not die. You see, I like that word right there. He says, for if thou beatest him. He's not saying give him detention. He's not saying give him a timeout. Mm -mm. If you beat him, you see that word right there? That's the word right That's the magic word right there. If thou beatest him with the rod, he shall not die. He's not going to die. He's, he's going to get wisdom though. Go back to Proverbs 29 verse 15. So we can understand what that rod is used for. For beating the child. Okay? Read that thing. Book of Proverbs chapter 29 verse 15. Come on. The rod and reproof give wisdom. They do what? Give wisdom. They give wisdom. Go back to Proverbs 23, verse 13. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 13. Come on. Withhold not correction from the child, for if thou beatest him with the rod, he shall not die. He's not going to die. He's going to get wisdom. He's not going to die. Instead, he will get wisdom. That's why it says, train up a child in the way he should go. When he's old, he will not depart from him. Why? How are you training him up? You read in the scriptures, their job is to apply. If they don't, they get the beat down. That's how they're gonna they're not gonna depart from. They need to understand cause and effect. Because today's children, they don't understand cause and effect. That's why the Lord is telling is commanding us with them with them as what? They must be smacked. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book of Sirach, chapter 80, verse 12. Ecclesiastical. In the Apocrypha, chapter 30 and verse 12. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 30, verse 12. Mm -hmm. Bow down his neck while he is young. Come on. And beat him on the sides while he is a child. You see that thing? Lest he wake stubborn. So the, the key is, it says, bow down his neck while he is young. That's why it's important for children to be taught from the moment they pop out of their mother's womb. Your job is to teach them. You understand? Don't wait until they get older. You understand? That's why it says, bow down his neck while he is young. I'll give an example of that. For instance, um, you see a lot of the times you've got, you've got brothers, they've got, you've got brothers and or sisters. They've got young, they've got, you know, nieces, they've got baby sisters, they've got Younger brothers, they've got brothers in their houses and all of that. Guess what, what, what's not happening today in the black community, in the Israelite community? The older brother will be talking to, to the younger brother or the younger sister. The younger sister is not going to say yes, sir, when he talks to the brother, when she talks to his, to her, to his brother, to her brother. She, she's not going to do that. You understand? 
their level of disrespect. Then you've got young girls talking to their uncles. They be saying, Yahweh, my man. You see that thing? Some evil stuff. They need to be smacked. You understand? You talk to your older sister? Yes, ma'am. That's what I want to hear in this camp. I don't want to hear none of that. If I hear anything outside of that, listen, I'm going to check you. You understand? I'm going to sit on you. I'm, I don't want to hear none of that. Children, they talk to those that are older than them? Yes, ma'am. You understand? If it's a sister. Yes, sir. If it's a brother. If I hear anything outside of that, you won't get it. Don't get it twisted. There will not, there will not be disrespect in this camp. Understand that thing. We're going to keep what is written. Come hell or high water, we're going to do what this Bible says. You understand? Read that again. Verse 12. Book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 30, verse 12. Mm -hmm. Bow down his neck while he is young Ray. and beat him on the sides while he is a child. Ray. Lest he wake stubborn and be disobedient unto thee and so bring sorrow to thine heart. You see what he's saying right there? You must make sure that you bow down their neck while they are, while they are still young. Make sure that you teach them respect while they're still young. Because today, I'm going to go back to that again, because that's what's going on in the Israelite community. Young girls talking to their uncles or their older brothers, they are not, they are not respect, they are not speaking to them like they are speaking to, um, to their, somebody that is older, to their brother or their older sister. They don't do that. They just say yes. You talk to them, they just say yes, like they are talking to their peers. No, yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Okay? That's the law. That's the respect. That's how you bow down their neck while they are still young. You understand? If they are calling their sister by name, you understand? They must say sister so and so. They must not be calling them by name just like that. Where do you read that in the scriptures? You don't see stuff like that. You understand? When they took him to their brother, their older brother, they mustn't be saying, no, no, hey, Bongan. No. Brother Bongan. You understand? We don't want to hear none of that stuff. Because but that's the reason why you see so much disrespect in the nation of Israel. It's a new day. Okay? Read that part again, the 12. Book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 30, verse 12. Read. Bow down his neck while he is young mm -hmm. and beat him on the sides while he is a child. The Lord, the Lord is telling you, says, beat him on the sides while he is a child. Meaning what? You smack them on the side using the stick, the rod. You understand? Shambok. Make sure they get it. Make sure they get it. That's why it says beat him on the side while he's a child. Let's see where it's stubborn. Because if you don't do that, they're going to grow stubborn because guess what? You decided to, plan, to allow the seed of evil to grow in their mind. Now the day when you correct them, now they're surprised. Wait a minute. I'm confused. You see, children, you see children that don't get corrected. When they get corrected, they are surprised. What's going on? Why is he talking to me like this? Because you are not used to being corrected. You are not used to being checked. You are not used to being smacked. That's why when correction comes, you work stubborn. You want to respond. You, you respond like you're talking to your peers. You understand? Because when you do it in the house, a lot of the times you get away with it. But guess what? Because you don't, you don't get smacked in the house. When you go out, when you meet people that don't know you, and you, 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 deal, you do that with them, guess what will happen? They will beat you. They don't know you. They might kill you. But mm -hmm. children don't think like that because they are kids. They are dumb. They are stupid. They need to be taught wisdom. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book of Proverbs, chapter 18, verse 24. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 24. Watch this. The book of Proverbs chapter 13, verse 24. Read. Really? He that spareth his rod hateth his son. Mm -hmm. But he that loveth him chastiseth him with bad times. So he chasteneth him be times. Be times meaning all the time. So it says, He that spare, he that spareth his rod hateth his son. Meaning what? When you don't correct your son or your daughter or your baby sister, your younger brother, if you don't correct them, guess what? You don't love them. You don't love them. Because if you don't do it in the house, the world is going to do it. The police is going to do it. The gang member is going to do it. The drug dealer is going to do it. That's what's going to happen if you don't correct them. 
Okay? But he that loveth his, that he that loveth him, chasteneth him be time, meaning all the time. You must sit on their behind. Okay? Watch this. Give me the right page, verse 1. Ecclesiastes. We're dealing with to make sure that your that children do not be led by themselves. We're gonna go back to that. What I'm going over is the most that God has commanded fathers to teach their children. That's what we're going over. You understand? Sarah chapter 30, verse 1. Read that. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 30, verse 1. Mm -hmm. He that loveth his son causes him oft to feel the rod, mm -hmm. that he may have joy of him in the end. You see what the, the Bible is saying? It says, he that loveth his son causes him oft, meaning all often, to feel the rod. You must give him the beat. Okay? That he may have joy of him in the end. Because when he grows older, He's gonna what? He's gonna remember all the lessons that he was taught, all the beat down that he got, and what did they give him? Wisdom. That's why the rod and reproof give wisdom. But a child left to himself, they will bring their mother to shame. You understand? Read. He that chastises his son shall have joy in him, and shall rejoice of him among his acquaintance. You see what he's saying? He that chastises his son. So if you chastise your son or your daughter, it says you will, you're, you're going to have joy of it. Because guess what? What is the joy? It's because the child knows how to follow instruction. You tell them, do this, they get it done. You don't need to be following up with them, finding out. That. No, they, they do it, they get it done. You look at what they've done, they do it exactly because why? The key to success is following instruction. The key to success is following instruction. Follow the instruction, and guess what? When you execute, you are not confused. You are not confused. But the child that is stubborn, when you give instruction, they are not listening. They are angry because why? They, they hate the fact that they are being corrected or being told what to do. So when it's time for them to apply, they don't apply. They just do whatever the hell they want. You understand? Guess what? That's a recipe for failure. Even in life, they're going to fail. You understand? Read that again, verse 2. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 30, verse 2. Mm -hmm. He that chastises his son shall have joy in him and shall rejoice of him among his acquaintance. Among his acquaintance. Among those, among, among, among those that know him. So your, your acquaintances, guess what? You're going to have what? He says you're going to rejoice of him among his acquaintance. Meaning those, those your acquaintances, um, give me one second. All right. Um, I'm sorry. Read that again. Verse two. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter thirty, verse two. He that chastises his son shall have joy in him, mm -hmm. and shall rejoice of him among his acquaintances. You see that thing? When you're among your acquaintances, you're gonna rejoice of your son or your daughter because they are. They will be respectful. They are going to greet the people with respect. You understand? They are not going to be, uh, because you have a notice in the black community. Um, you wanna, if you want to really see if the children are in order, just invite people to your house. You're going to really see how if your children are in order or not. Once you invite people to your house, the children will be doing what? If the children that are out of control, you're going to see them moving up and down, passing between the gaps. They'll be making noise, sitting there, doing, you know, getting snacks. You understand? When you have to be correcting them all the time. Because why? You don't set the house in order. You understand? They'll be doing just evil stuff before they, your guests, your acquaintances. But those children that are taught the right way, guess what they're going to do? There's guests coming to the house, guess what they do? If they, they'll be passing, they'll come and greet with respect. And after that, you're never going to see them. They disappear, they go at the back, they mind their business, the things that they were called, they are commanded in the house to do. They'll be busy with their chores and all that. Those are children that are in order. They are not idle. They know exactly what they're supposed to do and when to do it. So, like I said, that's why here, read that again. It says, and shall rejoice, read that part. And shall rejoice of him among his acquaintance. You see that thing? Read on. Verse 3. He that teaches his son grieveth the enemy. Mm -hmm. And before his friends, he shall rejoice of him. Because it says, he that teaches his son grieveth the enemy. 
Because the job of the enemy is to do what? Is to destroy our sons and our daughters. That's why today, the, everywhere you go in the locations, whether you go to ShopRite, whether you go to Pick and Pay or Spa or Boxer, there's always a box of condoms, a box of condoms everywhere. Why? Because they are giving our sons and daughters, teenagers, license to have sex. That's what the condom is there for. The condom was designed to give our sons and daughters license to have sex. Okay? So, but when you teach your sons and daughters to keep their legs closed, their daughters to keep their legs closed, to open the Bible, guess what? You grieve the enemy. Because those, those condoms are not going to do what they are designed to do. To make sure that our teenagers, our daughters, they fall pregnant. You understand? Young boys and young girls have sex, have abortion. It's going to prevent all that because that's what the enemy wants. You understand? Come on. Let's go. Though his father die, yet he is as though he were not dead. Mm -hmm. For he has left one behind him that is like himself. You see that thing? It's as though his father died. It is if the father dies, it will be as if the father is not even dead. Because the son or the daughter, they're going to behave and conduct themselves according to what their father taught them. You understand? That's an honor right there. Give me that in Sirach chapter 11. Watch this. Sirach 11 verse 28. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 28. Mm -hmm. Judge none blessed before his death. Mm -hmm. For a man shall be known in his children. You see what the Bible is saying? It says, don't judge anybody blessed before they die. Okay? For a man shall be known in his children. That's what we are reading in Sirach chapter 30. Okay? Verse 4. Don't judge anybody blessed before they die. Once they are dead, you look at their children, how their children conduct themselves. Then you're going to know. That man right there, that man was blessed. Look at his children. Look at his sons. Look at his daughters. They are upright. They do what his Bible says. They are honorable. You understand? Don't bring shame to the house. You brothers, as you are growing up, as you coming up in this truth, you understand you're going to get married. You better make sure that you set your house in order. You understand? Do not allow your children to bring shame to your house. That would be a shame. You understand? Watch this. Go back to Paul. Go back to the right page of the four. Ecclesiastes chapter 30, verse 4. Mm -hmm. Though his father die, yet he is as though he were not dead. Come on. For he has left one behind him that is like himself. You see that thing? He has left one behind him like himself. Next verse. While he lived, he saw and rejoiced in him. Mm -hmm. And when he died, he was not sorrowful. You see that thing? When his father died, he wasn't sorrowful that, you know what? Whew, the type of child that I raised, that was the devil the Bible speaks of. The father is not going to think like that. Why? Because he, he saw, he says, while he lived, he saw and rejoiced in him. Why? Because he walked after his footstep. Because what was his footstep? The laws of God. That was the footstep. You understand? Come on. He left behind him an avenger against his enemies. Mm. And one that shall requite kindness to his friends. You see that thing? He left behind him an avenger against his enemies. So these, our children, they are avengers. If they are taught the laws of God and they apply God's commandments and keep the laws of God, they are avengers. Because when we are dead and gone, guess what? They're going to continue this truth. They want to push this truth forward to wake up the nation so that we become honorable before the Father that we should inherit. Right now, as a nation, we are not honorable. Why? The branch of the Lord is not beautiful right now. Why? Because men and women, they are doing evil before the Lord. So we are not beautifying the most like God before men. Okay, we are making our Father in heaven look bad. That's what we are doing. So we need to clean that image. We need to clean that up. It's our responsibility to do that with this Bible. Okay, watch this. Um, read verse 7 now. Ecclesiastes chapter 30, verse 7. Mm -hmm. He that maketh too much of his son shall bind up his wounds. And his bowels will be troubled at every cry. Now that's a heavy verse right there. Read verse 7 again. Ecclesiastes chapter 30, verse 7. He that maketh too much of his son shall bind up his wounds, and his bowels will be troubled at every cry. So the Bible is saying, don't make too much of your son or your daughter. It says, He that maketh too much of his son shall bind up his wounds. Meaning what? 
Because if you are making too much of your son, meaning what? You are not correcting that boy. You are not correcting that daughter. You are emboldening them in their evil. You are giving them, you are teaching them an evil lesson. You understand that it's okay to do what they are doing. You understand? It says, um, he says, you're gonna, he says, and it shall bind up his wounds. Meaning, whatever wrong that your son or daughter is gonna do, everybody's gonna be looking at you, the parent. That's how you're gonna bind up their wounds. You understand? The people are not gonna talk about your son, they're gonna talk about you. That you are a poor parent, you are a bad parent. That's why your son or daughter is like that. You understand? It says, and his bowels will be troubled at every cry. Because every cry that your child is going to make, guess what? It's going to make you sick. Because you allow this son or daughter to grow up being spoiled. To grow up being scattered. Now when it's time for them to be a man or woman, now they cannot stand. They cannot take correction and the world is harsh. When they can take correct, when the correction comes, it's gonna be like then now they just wanna kill themselves. You understand? So that's why the Lord is saying, mm -mm, don't make too much of your children. You understand? And to explain that, read verse nine. Jump down to verse nine. Ecclesiastes chapter thirty, verse nine. Mm -hmm. Cocker thy child, and he shall make thee afraid. Play with him, and he will bring thee to heaviness. You see that part right there? It says, Cocker thy child. To conquer the child means to do what? To cuddle them, spoil them. It says, spoil your child, and he shall make thee afraid. Because now you're going to get to a point where you are even afraid to go and correct. You are afraid to go and correct your child. Whether it's your sister, your brother, you are going to be, you are going to be afraid. Because what? Their child is spoiled. Don't nobody correct them. You understand? So now it, it puts fear on those that are older than him to correct him, those that are older than him to correct them. You understand? Cock up thy child and he shall make thee afraid. Play with him and he will bring thee to heaviness. You only, when, when, you, when your child's name comes up, guess what? Your mind is going to be in heaviness. You understand? You're going to be wishing that that child was not even born. You understand? Because of evil they are. Why? Because you taught them an evil lesson. You left that child to themselves. You never corrected them. Okay? Watch this. Um, keep reading. Read verse 10 now. Watch this. Verse 10. Laugh not with him, lest thou have sorrow with him, mm -hmm. and lest thou nest thy teeth in the end. You see what it's saying? So to conquer thy child, he's letting you know. Verse 7, 9, and 10, he's explaining the same thing. Laugh not with him, lest thou have sorrow with him. Because if you laugh at their folly, right, you don't correct, you wink at their evil, guess what? Let thou, he said what? Let thou have sorrow with him. Because guess what's going to happen? If you are laughing with them, when they do evil and they find themselves in trouble, you're going to what? You're going to sorrow with them. You're going to be feeling sorry for them. Mm -mm. You're supposed to tell them that's what you get for being evil. I'm surprised that you're not even dead. That's what you must tell your children. The hell is this? You must tell them, listen, I'm surprised you're not dead. Okay? I'm surprised. So that's how they need to understand that, listen, you don't give a damn about their feelings. You must tell them, listen, what you're doing right there, you and I are going to have problems. They need to know. Wherever they at, you, they are, your voice needs to ring in their head. That voice must be what is written in this book. So that wherever they are, when they're about to make some evil decision, your voice will be ringing. Say, you know what? If I do this and I get home, I'm going to be in trouble. They need to know that. They need to be in fear. Let me tell you, let me say that again. They need to be in fear. The first thing that the Lord wants from us is to fear him. It's not to love him. Mm -mm. It's to fear him. That's the first thing the Lord requires from us. Fear. Okay? Read that again. Verse 10. Ecclesiastes chapter 30, verse 10. Laugh not with him, lest thou have sorrow with him, and lest thou gnash thy teeth in the end. You see that thing? And lest thou gnash thy teeth in the end. You're going to be regretting in the end. You understand? Jump down to verse 12. Bow down his neck while he is young, mm -hmm. and beat him on the sides while he is a child, Come on. lest he works stubborn and be disobedient unto thee, 
and so bring sorrow to thine heart. You see that thing right there? He's going to bring sorrow to your heart if you don't chastise him. Next verse. You know what? Mm, wait, 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 wait. No, no, not now. I'm going to deal with this later. Okay, watch this. Now, we dealt with how you're supposed to deal with this, how you're supposed to make sure that your child is in order. Okay, watch this. What happens if you don't correct this demon? Let's deal with that now. How? What happens? What are the? What are the? the what is the bad product that you're gonna get if you don't correct that demon child that you've got? Whether it's the younger sister, younger brother, that's the demon right there. They need to be taught the laws of God. It's that simple. You understand? Watch this. Give me Second Ezra chapter five and verse eight. Okay. Second Ezra chapter five, verse eight. Watch this. Second book of Ezra, chapter 5, verse 8. Mm -hmm. There shall be a confusion also in many places, and the fire shall be oft sent out again, and the wild beasts shall change their places, and menstruous women shall bring forth monsters. That's the key right there. And menstruous women shall bring forth monsters. Menstruous women is evil women, unclean women. Mentally unclean, physically unclean, spiritually unclean women. They bring forth monsters. Because how are these women unclean? Guess what? They sleep around. They be doing all manner of evil stuff. Sleeping with Jabulani, sleeping with Bongani over there. By the time they are older, everybody's stuff is in themselves, is in there. You understand? The child that's going to come out, guess what? All the spirits of Jabulani and Bongani and Chibos, they are all up in there. That child will come up, will come out a monster. And that's what we are seeing today. Monster children, children that are stubborn, children that do not take correction. We see them when we go to the city to teach. We see them when they work with their parents, their fathers and mothers. Their fathers, they are afraid of their children. Mothers are afraid of their children. Why? Because they say, no, just give him. He has a nigger a man. That's a monster right there. I use the grandmothers making sure that that they are you 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 have a notice in the black community, there's always that brother in the house. He doesn't want to get a job, he smokes weed, he drinks. There's the grandmother. The grandmother, whenever they get their money, the grand money, they always make sure, yeah, this one is for my grand. Just make sure we to manja fanu kai fanu mige the manu pema manu puza so that the manja doesn't go out. Don't think I'm crazy. I'm told these are facts. You understand? Make sure we to manja we manja we to like we we fanu to mige the manu manu pema. Your mouth will change and manga it all. Grandmothers, menstruous women. Read that part again. And menstruous women shall what? And menstruous women shall bring forth monsters. And menstruous women shall bring forth monsters. Give me the book of Isaiah chapter 3 verse 12. Isaiah chapter 3 verse 12. The book of Isaiah chapter 3 verse 12. Mm -hmm. As for my people, children are their oppressors. Come on. And women rule over them. Wait. Oh, my people. They which lead thee cause to earth. Cause thee to earth. So cause he's saying, thee to earth. as for my people, as for the children of Israel, that's, excuse me, because that's who God's people are, the children of Israel. Children are their oppressors. How the children oppressing the, 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 older, the older generation? is because women are ruling over them. They are being raised by their mother. Their father is not there. You see, children need a male presence in their life. Children need a strong male in their life who understands God's law. A man that's going to be set the young men and the young women in order. You understand? That's why it says women rule over them. Because the women, they raise the children. If there's a boy, they're going to raise this boy to be effeminate, to be all in their feelings. This boy is going to grow up being very weak in the spirit. Many of them, they become gay. Many of them become thugs. Or many of them became, become become homosexuals. That's one of the three options they become. They join gangs because what? They don't know how to deal with conflict. Anything small happened already, they pull out a gun, they pull out a knife because what? They're emotional. 
They don't know how to deal with, they don't know how to deal like men because they are not men. Why do you think all the killing of the gang members and all that? It's because those are children that they are in their emotions and feelings. They are raised by their mothers. You understand? That's why they become effeminate, gays. You understand? They become gang members. They become homosexual. They end up in jail. That's what happened. That's what's going on this day. Okay? It says, women rule over them. That's the menstrual women in 2nd Ezra 5 and 8. Oh, my people, they which lead thee, meaning the with the men, the boys that are led by their mothers, mm -hmm. cause them to err. They're going to cause you to sin and destroy the way of their path because the way of the young man's path must be dictated by the father. The way of a young woman's life must be dictated by the father. And the mother will take the instruction from the father and dispense it down. Make sure that the children obey that which the father has thought out. That's the order. That's how families get built. That's how the nation gets built. You understand? Strong men and women keeping God's commandments, strong marriages. That's how the children are going to grow up being what? Strong minded and sober minded because of that thing. Read that part again, verse 12. Book of Isaiah, chapter 3, verse 12. Mm -hmm. As for my people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. It says, children are their oppressors. Let me show you how they oppress. Jump up to verse 4. Isaiah, chapter 3, verse 4. Mm -hmm. And I will give children to be their princes, and babes shall rule over them. That's what's going on today. Children, it says, children shall be their princes, and babes shall rule over them. That's why the children are oppressing the older men today, the older women, their mothers, their grandfathers and grandmothers. That's what children are doing today. You see young girls beating their mothers. You see young girls beating their grandmothers. We hear horror stories in the community. Just read Daily Sun, you see that stuff. You understand? Read on, verse 5. And the people shall be oppressed, everyone by another, mm -hmm. and everyone by his neighbor. Right. The child shall behave himself proudly against the ancient mm -hmm. and the base against the honorable. He says the child shall behave himself proudly against the ancient. Meaning what? The children are going to be disrespectful to the older ones. That's what's going on today. Like I mentioned, that's not going to go down in the chair. Understand that thing. If I see something go down like that, you're going to get it. We will not tolerate disrespect. That's not going to happen. We keep what is written in this Bible. Understand that. Thing. That's how the nation is going to be built. You understand? Read that part again. The child shall what? The child shall behave himself proudly against the ancient mm -hmm. and the base against the honorable. Watch this. Give me the book of Ecclesiastes now. Chapter 30 and this 8. He says, the child shall behave himself proudly against the ancient. Sirach so chapter 30 and verse 8. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 30, verse 8. Mm -hmm. And horse not broken becometh headstrong, and the child left himself will be willful. You see that part there? It says, a horse not broken become headstrong. You ever seen a horse? They train horses from the time when they are what? They are, they are, they are at the age where they can be directed and all that so that they can what? They can ride and all whatever. They train them from at a very early age, horses. You see what it even says? A horse not broken become headstrong. Meaning what? You're going to say, because you use the bridle and all of that to direct it, to guide it. He's going to, although the bridle is going to be pain, painful in his mouth, he's still going to go the opposite direction. So if you look at a horse and a donkey as well, if a donkey is not, is not, um, is not um, raised up the right way, those that are, you know, dealing with animals and all that. Donkeys. Let me see. Let me show a donkey. A donkey is so stubborn, right? I've seen people that used to ride on donkeys in the bundes, okay? And you can see that these donkeys, they are not, uh, they were not, they just bought them from somewhere. They didn't train them. So what the donkey will do, right? The donkey will see a tree right there. And the tree is not is, is tall, but it is is not is not that tall. It's tall enough such that, that if you are sitting on the on the cart that the donkeys are, are pulling, when he when the donkey goes into the tree, 
is going to make sure that the donkey, I don't even know how the donkey knows to go into a thorn tree. It goes into a thorn tree, and the people that are on the cart that the donkey is pulling, they are going to be what? They are going to make sure that their heads, they are going to be, they are going to be all up in that thorn tree. That's the donkey voice. And the donkey will sit under that tree. You're not going to move it. That's the donkey. So the children are like that if the child is not set in order. You understand? Your job is not to be friends with your child. Mm -mm. The child needs to understand the relationship between the mother and the father. The child needs to be able to relationship to understand their relationship between their older sister and themselves. They need to understand that that relationship must be very clear. There must not be bla blurry lines. When you talk to your younger brother, listen, yes, ma'am. Did you do what I told you to do? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Likewise, you've got younger sisters, baby sisters, the same thing. No two ways about it. Every dog needs a master. Let me say that again. Every dog needs a master. You understand? Read that again, verse 8. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 30, verse 8. Mm -hmm. And horse not broken become as headstrong. Really? And a child left to himself will be willful. A child left to themselves, they are going to be willful. They're going to do whatever the hell they want. Because one, when you leave them to themselves, that evil that is bred, that is bred in them, guess what? You are, listen, you are watering it. You understand? Watch this. Proverbs 29, 15. Let's go back there. Proverbs 29, verse 15. The book of Proverbs, chapter 29, verse 15. Mm -hmm. The rod and reproof give wisdom, but a child left to himself bringeth his mother to shame. You see that thing? So if you leave the child to themselves, you don't correct them, you're going to bring, you're going to breed monsters. Monstrous children, you understand? You're going to bring forth monsters. Disrespectful children if you don't correct them. Because if you don't get them the right way, if you don't check them according to the scriptures, Make sure that you are always on them. Guess what? It says, but a child left to himself bringeth his mother to shame. That's why in Sirach chapter 30, verse 8, it says, and he will, he will be willful. If a child left to himself, he's going to be willful. He's going to bring shame to your house. Watch this. Give me Sirach 33, verse 27. Chapter 33, verse 27. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 33. Verse 27, mm -hmm. send him to labor that he be not idle, mm -hmm. for idleness teacheth much evil. You see that thing? You leave that child them to by themselves, it says idleness teacheth much evil. So the evil that is already in their mind, guess what? It's going to grow. It's going to, it's going to multiply. That's why it says, for idleness teacheth much evil. Because when they are sitting and doing nothing, what do you think these teenagers are doing? What do you think they are doing? Because today they've got smartphones. What do you think they are doing on, on social media? They are posting naked pictures of themselves. And I'm talking about young teenage boys and young teenage girls. That's what they do. They have a thing called sexting. They'll be sexting on social media, on, 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 uh, on WhatsApp. They'll be sexting. Today, you know, WhatsApp has got videos now. They'd be what? Having video sex. That's what's going on today. And they post those things on WhatsApp, on Instagram. They post them on, what's this? Uh, Twitter and Facebook. You understand? That's what these teenage girls and boys do. That's what they do. They are full of evil. You understand? And when they get sick, guess who's supposed to take responsibility? The people in the house, the parents, the older brothers and the older sisters. Now they have to take responsibility. Mm -mm. You should leave that child to drop dead. Why? Who told them to go in there? Who told them to draw? It? Who told them? Who sent them to go out there and have sex? Nobody did that. Now they get sick. You must take responsibility for that. No. Hell no. You can drop dead. Okay? Because you learn the lesson. Don't be doing that. Because we told you. When they come home sick, don't be saying, oh, my child. Mm -mm. Say, I told you that. Didn't I tell you? That's how you must deal with it. I told you. And don't say nothing else. Keep it moving. Go about your life. They must feel it. They must understand. If you disrespect the laws of this house, you're on your own. They need to know that. Okay? 
Read that part again, verse 27. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 33, verse 27. Mm -hmm. Send him to labor, that he be not idle. For idleness teacheth much evil. For idleness teacheth much evil. You, these children, that's why our children today, they are involved in gangs, they are jollying, you know, they're having boyfriends and girlfriends, they are smoking, they are drinking, you understand? It's because of what? They are too idle. They are not busy with nothing. They're supposed to be given chores. Children, as, 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 as from the time when a child can be able to, um, you know, from eight and all of that, they need to, not even from eight, that's too long, okay? From five years old, they need to know how to fold their clothes they wear. Teach them. They need to know how to fold their small clothes, okay? Not to put the shoes in a specific place. Make sure when they put their shoes is clean all the time. Six, seven years old, then they advance in their chores. When they get to a seven, eight, they must be able to know how to clean stuff. You understand? You must teach them to do that. 10 years old, they know how to work the kitchen. They know how to wash the dishes. They know how to clean the floor. They need to know how to do that stuff. They need to know that stuff. When they get to more, if they are over 10 years old, oh my God, man, there's so many stuff to do in the house. You understand? Girls, they need to know how to wash. They be washing clothes and all of that. They be cleaning the house. They be cleaning the bathroom. They be doing dishes. They be knowing how to cook. The young men, they need to do what? They need to do gardening. You know, when we were growing up in the house, you know, there's weeds growing. The, the weeds they grow in the house, even outside. Uh, you know, outside the gate, your house, there'll be weeds all over. That's the job of the young men. Their job is to make sure that uh, they get a space. You understand? They make sure that the, 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 that whole area is clean and is well guarded and all that, taken care of. You understand? In the house, making sure all of that is good. When they see the fence is not good, they see, okay, the light bulb is, is, you know, is wobbly, the door is not operating correctly, there's a toolbox in the house. If there's no toolbox, buy, the, buy, the, buy your younger brother a toolbox. The hell is this? He must get a toolbox now to fix that. You understand? The door of the, of the rack, is not working properly, you must get a toolbox, you know, you must fix it. Keep him busy. They're not going to have time to do evil. You understand? Be wrong. Verse 28. 28. Mm -hmm. Set him to work. Come on. As is fit for him. Right. If he be not obedient, put on more heavy fetters. You know, I love this verse so much. Read verse 28 again. <laughs> The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 33, verse 28. Uh -huh. Set him to work as is fit for him. Come on. If he be not obedient, put on more heavy fetters. You see what the Lord is saying? He says, send this boy or this child, this, this daughter to work. Make sure that they are busy. But here's the part. He says, as, it is, as, as is fit for him. Meaning work that is what? That is appropriate to at, at their level. But watch the part. He says, if he be not obedient, if he is stubborn, he doesn't want to do it, guess what? Put more work on him. Put more work that is more heavier than him. Put more. You understand? He says, put more heavy fetters. Then it must enter into the mind. If it means that the whole day, they are going to be dealing with the house, they're going to be you know, cleaning, taking the weed out, using the wheelbarrow, doing this and that, they must be doing that. They must be doing that stuff. Okay? They have to. If they, if they, if they, if you give them, they have lip, put more stuff. I'll give an example. You tell them to, to clean the yard and all that, make sure the yard is clean, make sure you, keep, you fix the doors of the wardrobe, they are broken and all that. If they do, let's say they do it, but they are currently, they are murmuring and complaining about it. Don't say nothing. Let them finish. After they are done, make them to start over. Make them to start from the beginning. Don't be playing nothing. Make them to, let, don't say, just leave them to do it. After they are done, make them to do it again. That's how you must deal. You understand? That's how you must deal like a mafia. That's how you must deal with these kids. You must deal like a mafia boss. Okay? Watch this. Give me, give me the book of Sirach 30 verse 11 now. Ecclesiastes chapter 30 verse 11. 
the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 30, verse 11. Mm -hmm. Give him no liberty in his youth and wink not at his follies. You see what the Lord is saying? Don't give him no liberty in his youth. Wink not at his follies. Because if you do, you're creating a monster. That boy or that girl is going to turn into a monster. And guess what? When he's a full-blown monster, guess what they start to do? You correct them, they go, because they join gangs, you understand? Guess what they're going to do? They end up killing their mother. They end up killing their father. They can end up killing their older sisters or their older brothers. Why? Because now they think they've got somebody backing them in the world that don't give a damn about their parents. Let me show you what Christ said about disrespectful kids. Out of the mouth of our Lord and Savior, the black Messiah, Jesus Christ. This is what he said about disrespectful children. Watch this. Give me Matthew chapter 15, verse 4. The book of Matthew chapter 15, verse 4. Mm -hmm. For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother, and he that curses father or mother, let him die the death. You see what the Lord said? This is Christ speaking. If you disrespect your father or your mother or your older sister, your older brother, the Bible says, let him die the death. You can drop dead. That's what the Bible says. It says, let them die the death. Okay? Watch this. Because if you conquer your child, this is the Bible order. Let's go to the book of Exodus now. Watch this. Exodus chapter 21. Hmm. Exodus chapter 21 and verse 15. The book of Exodus chapter 21, verse 15. Mm -hmm. And he that smiteth his father or his mother shall be surely put to death. You see what the Lord is saying? Because today you have young girls beating their mother. You've got young girls beating their grandmother. You've got young boys beating their fathers and their grandfathers. You, see, you hear what the Bible is saying? What is the judgment for a child, a daughter or a son that does that? Read that again. Shall be surely put to death. Meaning what? You deserve to die. You must be put to death. And guess what? Today we can't do it, but the Lord will do it. You can get hit by a car. You can get a stray bullet. Somebody can stab you. You can get a disease and drop dead. That's the Lord doing it. Okay. Jump down to verse 17. Watch this. The book of Exodus, chapter 21, verse 17. Mm -hmm. And he that curses his father or his mother shall surely be put to death. Shall surely be put to death. They must die. But today we can't do it because we are not under the law of sacrifice. Guess who does it today? The Lord does it. The most High God does that day. You understand? You can always count on the Lord to do it. The Lord doesn't miss when he does those things. Okay? Watch this. Give me Sirach 30 verse 11. Go back there again. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 30, verse 11. Mm -hmm. Give him no liberty in his youth and wink not at his follies. He says, don't be laughing at the evils that he's doing. Because today, the young men, they join gangs. and all. I'm still going to deal with them. They join gangs, uh, girl, the girls, they also, girls also, they join gangs, by the way, not just the boys, the girls do it too. You understand? He says, don't wink at their folly. When you see them going off, you better check them, because if you don't, you're creating a monster. And the day when that, that monster is full blown, guess what? That monster will devour you. That child is going to oppress you. That child is going to oppress you every day of your life. You understand? When he goes to jail, guess what you're going to do? You're going to have to go and bail him out. We see that in the community. You understand? We know, we, you know that your son is the devil, the Bible speaks of. But whenever the police come and pick him up, guess what? You are the one that is hiding him. You're the one that is speaking for him. No, my child is not like that. Hey, what was he? Hey, what was he? You know your child is the devil, but you are hiding him. Same with the girl. The sister, you know your child, your daughter is a whore. She's sleeping around all over the place. And guess what? When her, her name comes up, you get upset. But you know she's a whore of the community. You understand? Jump down to verse 13. 
Watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter 30, verse 13. Mm -hmm. Chastise thy son and hold him to labor, lest his lewd behavior be an offense unto thee. He says, chastise thy son and hold him to labor, lest his lewd behavior, meaning his evil, disrespectful behavior, be an offense unto you. Because he's going to be an offense unto you. You're going to find your son or your daughter offensive and disrespectful. We see that all the time. You understand? Watch this. Now, we need to understand the children, they become monsters. Remember, we read in 2nd Ezra. Go back to 2nd Ezra so we don't lose that thought. Okay? 2nd Ezra chapter 5, verse 8. 2nd book of Ezra chapter 5, verse 8. Mm -hmm. There shall be a confusion also in many places, and the fire shall be oft sent out again. And the wild beasts shall change their places, and menstruous women shall bring forth monsters. Menstruous women shall bring forth monsters, because women rule over them. These are monsters that the women are raising today. Because today, another thing also is that when it says menstruous women shall bring forth monsters, women rule over them. Because even if there's mother and father in the house, when the father corrects the children, the black woman, she will open a big black mouth to say, no. That's how that's the reason why the children they do whatever the evil they do because the mother is sitting right there in the corner, making sure that when the father corrects the children, the mother is gonna be standing up running at big mouth. That's why now you see today the family is divided. Because the children, when they want to do evil, they all they know that the mother will be advocating for them, will be rooting for them. Guess what? Who becomes the bad guy? The father always becomes the bad guy. That's why today children they hate their fathers, they love their mothers, because the mother is the one that is teaching their children to hate their father. Why? Because the father corrects, and the, the mother makes it seem like that's a bad thing. No, that's a good thing. You understand? Watch this. Give me Proverbs chapter 1, verse 10. Okay? This is what happens to these children. You know what? Give me Isaiah 51 first. Give me Isaiah 51, verse 20. Isaiah chapter 51, verse 20. The book of Isaiah chapter 51, verse 20. Mm -hmm. Thy signs have fainted. They lie at the head of all the streets as a wild bull in a net. They are full of the fury of the Lord, the rebuke of thy God. He says, thy sons have fainted. Let's talk about the young man now. Thy sons have fainted. They are fainted. They are fainted from who they are. They are unconscious. They, they, it says, they lie at the head of all the streets. What is at the head of all the streets? What is that? The street corner. That's why you go to a car. Every, every corner, you always see young boys at the corner. You understand? Smoking weed, sagging their pants, drinking now, especially now with the lockdown. Young men are drinking now. You understand? And when you go to the shops now, when you go to shop right, you go to pick and pay, you go to Woolworths, you go to checkout. Guess what you find in the shelf? You find alcohol-free beer. Ever, anybody ever seen that? Yes, Alcohol, alcohol-free beer. You see a Savannah, they say alcohol-free. You see a Amstel, alcohol-free. What do you think they are doing? These nations, these other nations, the white men, the Chinese, the Japanese, the Arabs. What are they doing in these shops? They are teaching the young men and the young women to drink. Because I remember when I was still in high school, this was years ago, okay? They had this thing called it control. I don't know if anybody knows that. It was like a, a white stick. And at the end of it, it had a red, it had, it, it had a, like a red thing at the end of it. Like it was like, yes, a, uh, it, it was shaped like a, like a cigarette. A but cigarette. It, was a, it, was a, it was a, it was a sweet, right? Mm -hmm. So, I noticed when I was in high school, I, I used to eat that. You understand? But what I noticed that when I was in high school, young men, they used to, because you hold it like a cigarette. Okay? Some of them, they'll be holding it, they don't even eat it. It's sitting in the mouth like a cigarette. And guess what? As we started to, to, to progress in our grades, going to, uh, you know, uh, grade 10, grade 11, and so forth, guess what started to happen? The same boys that were in standard six, standard seven, standard eight, because that's when they were called when we was in high school. 
Guess what? By the time they go to matrix, the majority of them were smoking for real. They were smoking for real. So what do you think these uh, alcohol-free beer is there about? That's a version of the control. That's what it is. By the time this lockdown is over, which is never going to be now, which will never happen, but guess what? In the next coming years, these young teenagers that you see today, in the next coming years, they'll be dead beat black men. They'll be drunkards. And the sisters too, by the way, because the sisters are doing it. Okay? That's why they're at the street corners. What do you think they're doing? They go to the shops because there's no age restriction. You go there, you go to the, you, like you're buying, uh, you know, Coca-Cola. You buy that uh, Savannah free alcohol, alcohol free. You pay. They don't even check your age. The young men at the street corners, that's what they are drinking. Savannah alcohol free. Heineken alcohol free. Taking their pants, smoking weed, smoking cigarettes, doing drugs, raping, murdering, stealing, terrorizing, robbing. That's what they are doing the whole day. Mostly guys, because I live in, in Gaza, I see this stuff. Every day, young men at the street corners, Galinga Matai. You understand? But Galinga Matai is the whole day we're playing cards. That's what we're reading here. Read that again, verse 20. The book of Isaiah, chapter 51, verse 20. Mm -hmm. Thy sons have fainted. They really? lie at the head of all the streets mm -hmm. as a wild bull in the net. They are full of the fury of the Lord, the rebuke of thy God. You see that thing? They lie at the head of all the streets. They are always at the street corner. As a wild bull in a net. They are not just like any bull. No, they are wild. What does that mean? They are out of control. They are disrespectful. You cannot tell them nothing. That's the wild bull. That's why it says, as a wild bull in a net, in a cage. Okay? They are full of the fury of the Lord. They are full of God's anger. You understand? The rebuke of their God. Watch this. Give me Proverbs chapter 1, verse 10. Now. Proverbs. Chapter 1, verse 10. The book of Proverbs, chapter 1, verse 10. Uh -huh. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. This is a commandment, okay? It says, my son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. Who's the sinners that are going to entice our sons and our daughters? Is the gang. You know, you see these, these, these gangs that they, they group, you see uh, from 10 years old and up up to like 18 years or up to 20, 21, you start to see the, 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 the young men, they, grow, they, 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 they travel in gangs. You understand? It says, let's meet at, at corner such and such. They go there. They'll be there in the nighttime. You understand? They leave the house, they'll be going there. At the corner, they'll be talking about some girl next door. They'll be talking about that girl next door. And guess what? The same young men, guess what they do? When one of them has a girlfriend, guess what happens to that girlfriend? All of them are going to sleep with her. They're going to run a train on her. I've had stories where the young men, one of them or two of them have a girlfriend. You know, there's two boys in the group that have a girlfriend. There are maybe five or six of them. They meet with the girlfriend. Guess what happens? All them, all the boys, they're going to end up sleeping with those girls. Some of them, they, because they're now they're sexually active and all of that, they are on their menstrual. I've had stories where they had to wait. In the middle of the thing, they had to wait for the, for the sister to, to finish her menstrual. Because remember, there's time when they have a heavy flow, especially in the beginning of the seven days. They, have to, they wait. They'll be standing there, waiting for her to finish. As soon as she's done, they go and they, they do it again. When she's flowing again, they stop. They would listen. That's some evil stuff going on today. You understand? That's where teenagers, teenage pregnancy happens. Teenage pregnancy. And guess what end up happening? They end up gang raping the girl. That's what end up happening. We've had stories. You understand? Just read Jamie's and you'll see these horror stories. You understand? Read that part again, verse 10. The book of Proverbs, chapter 1, verse 10. Uh -huh. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. Who's the sinner? This is going into peer pressure. Peer pressure. From 10 years old and up, 13 years old, 14, 15, 16 years old, peer pressure going on up to 21. Peer pressure. When it says the sinners entice you, that's the, that's the pressure that you get from your peers. 
those that are in the same age group. Watch this. Give me the book of Luke chapter 7, verse 31. Luke. Luke 7, verse 31. The book of Luke, chapter 7, verse 31. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said, Whereunto then shall I liken the men of this generation? And to what are they like? You see what he's asking? What is the men of this generation like? Because the, today the men of this generation, they don't have common sense. They don't lead by example. They don't set the right example. The young men that are coming after them, they're doing the same dumb stuff. Okay, come on. They are like unto children sitting mm. in the marketplace. You see that thing? They are like children sitting in a marketplace. The same children that you see that we read about in Isaiah 51 verse 20, Proverbs chapter 1 verse 10, that's the same one. They are like unto children sitting in a marketplace. That's the street corner. Okay, come on. And calling one to another. You see that thing? And calling one to another. That's why the book of Proverbs says, My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. The enticement is that when they call you, for, them, for you to join their group. Okay? Calling one to another, saying what? And saying, We have piped unto you, and ye have not danced. Mm -hmm. We have mourned to you, and ye have not wept. Because this part when it says, we have piped unto you and we have not danced. That's, why, that's when you don't consent. But if you don't consent, when they pipe unto you, guess what? You're going to dance to the tune. You understand? If they, it says, we have mourned unto you, ye have not wept. But if they mourn unto you, meaning they complain, ah, when I, every time I be, the city I come, they, you don't go. I'll feel harm. So, you, that's what they say. Every time I spoke Hamba, so when I spun Bani, I want in Tomba Zana, I spun Bani, no, I'll feel Hamba Nash. That's the thought. That's the conversation these young men are having. You understand? But this part, when it says, We have piped unto you and you have not danced, we have mourned unto you and you have not wept. That's the one that does not consent. But guess what? What's happening today? All the young girls and the young boys, they are consenting. So it's because it's not just the young boys, because I remember there was a brother with us. And he's got girls, okay? The girls are not the girls, are not the, the age. They, they are not young like my girls. They are older. They are like maybe 21, some are 20 and all that, 20, 21, okay? I remember I, I, we, I went to his, his house to go and teach him the law, the commandments and all that. And I saw his young girls, I'm mean, 21, 20, 21. And other young girls, in fact, before that happened was that, yeah, other young girls came to the house to, call, to come and call them. He said, listen, Asambi. Before you know it, they, they said, no, not yet. We're not going to leave now. Let's not even 30 minutes later. There was already young boys coming into the, into the, into the going, coming through the gate. Saying, no, Dallas is men. We had to get up and say, what the hell is this? We told the young men, get the hell out. Okay? Get the hell. This is not the teaser. This is not summit where you come and pick up balls up in here. You know, get the hell out. But yeah. the thing is, he was afraid to correct them. They are so disrespectful, they even went as far to come into the house. You understand? And we had to check the girls too. They ended up sitting with us. We ended up, they ended up having to learn the scripture. You understand? But he wasn't consistent in attending the classes. So guess what happened? Now the girls are back into the world. You understand? But that's the point. Go back to Proverbs chapter 1 verse 10. You know what? No, give me Proverbs 4 verse 14. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 14. We're still dealing with peer pressure. Gang. Okay, read that. The book of Proverbs chapter 4 verse 14. Mm -hmm. Enter not into the path of the wicked. And go not in the way of evil men. That's peer pressure. Because when they call you, you're going to go. And guess what? When you go, whatever evil they do, you are part of it. And guess what? That one day, it could be your last day. You go there, they do some evil. Instead of uh, other people getting hurt, you get put to death. You understand? And you're now, your family has to go there and carry you in a body bag. You understand? Next verse. Verse 15. Avoid it. Pass not by it. 
turn from it and pass away. You see what it's saying? Don't go into the way of evil men. That's thing about peer pressure. You understand? Come on. For they sleep not, except they have done mischief. Mm -hmm. And their sleep is taken away unless they cause some to fall. That's the key right there. It says, for they sleep not, except they have done mischief. That's why whenever these young boys, they come together, that's the peer pressure. You understand? But you know, adolescent stage. They are in, the, they are in that adolescent stage. Guess what? Before they go to sleep, they're already planning. Okay, yeah, funny so one as bad bad. So saying the so and so and so. You understand? That's what they do. They discuss the evil they are going to do. Okay, for they sleep not, except they have done mischief. They've jumped into somebody's somebody's house because there's a girl in there. Guess what? The father in there might have a gun in and not kill you, but then paralyze you. You end up on a wheelchair for the rest of your life. The reason why these young men don't think like this is because they don't have brains. You understand? The brains are not operational. The brain is empty. They need the laws of God. They need that the new software. They need a soft, they need their hard drive to be reset. You need to format the hard drive. That's the mind. It must be formatted. Then you need to start a new program, which is the law. Okay, come on. Verse 17. For they eat the bread of wickedness. Mm -hmm. and drink the wine of violence. You see that thing? They eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. So that's why they what? They rob, they murder, they steal. You understand? They cheat, they rape. They do all manner of evil. Why? Because the peers are the ones that are pressurizing them to do it. Because some of them in these gangs, they don't want to do it. But because there's no father in the house, that's why they do it. Okay? Go back to Proverbs chapter 1, verse 10. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 10. Mm -hmm. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. Consent thou not. Watch this. Mm, I want to share something real quick. If sinners entice thee, consent thou not. Watch this. Um, I'm going to share my screen real quick. So everybody can see what I'm looking at. Now, these are gangs, okay? There's a show called Street Talk. This is an old show, but just watch this, okay? Uh, anybody can see my screen? Yes, sir. Oh, please. I'm a black man. Move on, move on. They think they're so tough, but they only have probably three or four guys that belongs to the Vatos Locos when we go that side. The whole people inside that area comes out and think that we're going to run away. We don't run away. We're not scared of you. We're not scared of your father, of your mother, oh, but we want you dead. Sooner or later, I promise that to... The you see what they're saying? Just listen to them. That's what we, we've been reading. That's what we've been reading this whole time. These are monsters. You understand? Read that again, Proverbs 1, verse 10. The book of Proverbs, chapter 1, verse 10. Mm -hmm. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. Watch this. Give me Proverbs chapter 4. Now, verse 16. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 16. For they sleep not, except they have done mischief. Mm -hmm. And their sleep is taken away unless they cause some to fall. You see what they are saying? We're not scared of your father, your mother, whoever. They say they swear to the Lord that they're going to do that. They're going to kill you. Okay, come on, verse 17. For they eat the bread of wickedness mm -hmm. and drink the wine of violence. That's what you are seeing here, okay? The Lord. But we want you dead. Sooner or later, I promise that to the Lord. Golden Olivia in the elf. 15 years old. You see that thing? 15. 15 years old. I'm an Italian and I attend school. My name is. You still in what? Primary is it? 
or high school? Uh, I was from an Italian. I live here in Tehoff and I attend school. My name is Serge. I'm an Italian. I stay here in Tehoff. My name is Mzayas. I'm an Italian. I stay in Tehoff. I attend school at Rosendal. My name is Malcolm X and I live here in Tehoff. I'm an Italian. Proudly, I shall say. He's a chief. Chief. Okay? Out of control. My name is Para. I live here in Delta. I attend school here in Delta. I'm a Vatos Locos. My name is Tizo. I'm a true Vatos Locos. I live here in Delta. Yeah, my name is Tabio. So I stay here in Delta. Watch Vatos Locos. The Italians live in Slevin section and the Vatos Locos live in Leiden. In Cooks, we also have VLs in 79. You see, Just in, like in Philippe, we also have wow, VLs. Like we, we, we have other friends. Yeah. You see that thing? These are, these are, these are children. You understand? But now, these are monsters. This is what Ezra is talking about when it says, menstruous women shall bring forth monsters. These are the monsters that you are seeing. So this is not just in Cape Town. It's in Alex. It's in Dembisa. It's in Soweto. It's everywhere. This is what you see. You understand? And they also stay we have in Italians Kaili. in Lang with we have Amavura in, 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 in Cooks and Fatos Locos and they have CWS here in Nyanga, Chama West and MTC. It's like in when we, we phone each other to form up a group mm -hmm. in Cape Town, Cape Town. Like Friday we must be a lot like a community. Everybody More has a knife, anything to kill, belts, everything. Then the VLs come out from the school, then it's going to be a clutch. Mm -hmm. Must be a lot like a community. Everybody More has a knife, anything to kill. You see that? Anything to kill. Hmm. Belts, everything. Then the VLs come out from the school, then it's going to be a clash. We're meeting the train or in town. Yeah, in the station. Cast him in the station. Yeah. But it all started from girls. But then, the in the station. Yeah. But it all started from girls. But then, when but, we are really, really fighting, we must show who is the best between the Italians and the Vatos blockers. But as I, as I see it, I think the Italians are the best yeah, at the moment. The Italian the all the way. They are the best. Because we, we just killed one of them now, now, last week. You see, it's like they are talking about courses. Yeah, they are 8 millimeters. Is all, yeah. That's how they are talking. You understand? Give me that in Isaiah 51 verse 20. Read that again. Isaiah chapter 51, verse 20. Mm -hmm. Thy sons have fainted. They lie at the head of all the streets as a wild bull in a net. Mm -hmm. They are full of the fury of the Lord, the rebuke of thy God. You see that thing? They are full, they say, as a wild bull in a net. That is what you are seeing here. These are wild bulls. They are out of control. They are uncontrollable. You understand? Yes, yes. We, uh, we, we catch him here at the rent office. He was standing with his girlfriend there. So we... You see that thing? Because now, you see what, what happens when these teenagers get together? Some of them, they not, not, not some, all of them, they have girlfriends. They make their business to find a girlfriend. And guess what? Also, there's gangs, there's, there's, there's gangs that are comprised of girls. I'm going to play that in a second. But what you are seeing here is that guess what happened to those girls that are part of these gangs? How do you think these girls get initiated? Everybody in the gang must sleep with all, with, with everybody in the, all, all the men in, in, in the gang must sleep with the new girl, all of them. That's how they get initiated. You understand? Stay with me. And he was with him. And he also stabbed him. Also stabbed him. And you see, see falls in the pack. And, and you see, him. so they are, they killed my friend. <laughs> but <laughs> after, they did come after us, after three months, 
they want another score. So yes, the score nine. was one new. So yes. they wanted the balance. Yes, that the score nine. was one one. Yes, this nine, this nine. Was it? Yeah, let's take him. I used this to chase them out of the train while the train is in motion. I take it out and I tell them, get. Oh, good, I can be my yeah. Which is my baby. I can't. You blow down the face. You tell her I'm so mad. You are so full of love. You are. Oh, you killed my friend. That's why I put. I mean, like. It's like even if we go out, it's not safe. You know, you know, we all party. You see, <laughs> everyone party much. But there is a place that you must separate. You see, as what they killed my friend is over just a girlfriend. That the girl stay in my section and in my road. So those guys, one of them are dating this girl. So the the fight started there up this girl. You see, you see what starts the fight? The women, the girls. So you young girls that are dating, that are interested in men, you better, you better get, you better run away from this stuff. Because if you don't, that's exactly what's going to happen to you. You young boys that are involved in this stuff, you better stay away from this stuff because you're going to end up gay. Okay. They're gonna give you a Colombian necktie. You know what a Colombian necktie is? They're gonna find you hanging on a tree or something. That's a Colombian necktie. You understand? But you see, these teenagers, they don't see this reality because they don't believe, because they think, oh no, they are just trying to scare us. Yes, we are. We wanna make sure that you are terrified every day of your life. Because if you don't want to apply what is written in this book, you're gonna die. Tell you straight. You understand? After that, we met that guy that went to, the, uh, to my friend's girlfriend and we stabbed him in the <laughs> town. And so they came after me last week. He stabbed me at the back. Show them and show them. 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 Couldn't dance. 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 Couldn't d
you shouldn't walk that way because they're coming that side. When we, when we walked on the main road, a, a lot of guys came to us with knives and like axes and that. They came to us, so we ran, we ran to houses. And then I came, okay, I ran away. I ran a, a long... Uh, <laughs> Okay, so that's it on that. Um, let me see, there's another one that I want to show. Okay. The Bible is a true book. Don't get it twisted. All right. Okay, so this one um, is like, I think a teenage girl was killed. Now, this is a gang member that is uh, crying because of how she was killed and all that. But he also is involved in a gang. Okay, watch this. With dried blood on his head from a fall in the local bar, this man, a convicted criminal, says he too has raped and served time in prison. But he says the killing here of 17 year old Anine Boyson was so brutal that even he is haunted. <laughs> He tells me, when I close my eyes at night, I think how her inner voice cried out for help. But we, the community, didn't hear. I feel very bad because I knew her well. Hello. And the reason why the community, the community heard what was going on, but the community didn't go out. You know why? Because they are afraid of these young boys that are oppressing the elders, the young boys that are oppressing the people in the community. That's why it says, and children are their oppressors and women rule over them. So he came over to us to insist that his gang, a violent criminal network called the 28s that are feared in communities like this, had nothing to do with the attack. He said, for everyone that's a 28, we were not part of this. Only that individual is to blame. Responsible. He and two others have been arrested, say police. It was at this construction site that Anine was raped, mutilated, and disemboweled. You see that thing? She was raped, mutilated. Oh my God. So what we are what you are seeing here is only the things that are recorded and reported. But there's many more incidences that happen on a daily basis that nobody talks about them. Okay? And it's our job to make sure that these young girls and young boys, they know exactly what the Lord, the judgment of the Lord is. This is what happens when you don't follow what is written in this book. You understand? So I hope you brothers, you men, I need you men to see this thing. We have a lot of work to do. We don't got time for BS. We've got so much work to do. These are places we're going to be going to teach the gospel. Boysen. Places like Boysen, Soweto, okay, El Dorado Park. Because that's where young men and young women they drop dead because of gangs. They are terrorized by by what? By these monsters. These monstrous children, they are terrorizing the community. Nobody's standing up. You understand? So we have a lot of work to do. Understand that thing. She survived the attack, but died later in hospital. Her injuries so horrific that the doctors and nurses who treated her were traumatized. It can't just be a straight murder. No one will do such an horrendous deed on anyone else. I am convinced there's some gang and some prison gang um, initiation that is linked to this particular murder and rape. So this is like a rank here yes, yes, within yes. the gang that you yeah. were in. And you were in there? The 26. The 26ers. Wilfred Yankee says he was tattooed in prison badges on his skin that defined his gang, the 26ers. They say they've been rehabilitated, but still understand the rituals of gang life. He tells me, when someone wants to join a gang, the gang leaders say, here's a knife, go stab. You see that thing? You're not going to join for free. You must prove yourself that you can actually do what they've done also. Shoot someone, and they do it as a test. But Anin's death was not part of that rite of passage, says Yankees. Yankees says, I don't understand why they did it. She maybe said, I don't want you anymore. Then the action started there. But I can't say. But it is drugs, wine. Drugs may help to explain what happened, but not why Anin was butchered. So it seems that even the most hardened criminals 
are searching for answers. Beyond the poverty, government seems unable to deal with the growing sense of hopelessness in places like this. As the gangster grips my hand, seemingly reluctant to let go, still upset, his solution is to call for more violence. One person must be executed and must be laid to death. Robin you see that thing right there? This is a vicious cycle, it's never gonna end. The only thing that's gonna break this vicious cycle is God's command. Because the reason why these young men are doing what they are doing to themselves is because they don't know who they are. The greatest crime that has ever been committed against the children of Israel was our identity being stolen from us. When our identity was stolen from us, we forgot who we are and how great we are on this earth. That's why we do the things we do to one another. We don't apply the royal law no more. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. We don't do that no more. You understand? Colonel CNN, Bredasdorp, South Africa. Okay. So. Go back to Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 4. No, no, Proverbs chapter 1 verse 10. One more again. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 10. Mm -hmm. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. So you young girls and young boys up in here, you better make sure that when sinners, those people, those, those young men that are in, or at, your, at your age group, they'll be calling you up to go to, to join some group. You know, you understand? To go out, going looking for girls and all of that. Don't be joining that stuff. Don't be joining that stuff because what happens is that when you join up and then it's very easy to fight among yourself, by the way, because you are very emotional. You don't know how to resolve conflict and all of that. Conflict ends up in violence and death. And it's always over some girl that they are fighting over. It always happens like that. You understand? Ray. If they say, come with us, let us lay wait for blood. Let us lurk privately for the innocent without cause. You see what he's saying? If they say, come with us, that we have piped unto you. It says, let us lay wait for blood. Meaning what? That that's violence is in their mind. That's what they eat on a day. The bread of wickedness. Okay? And violence. Let us lay wait for blood. Let us lay privately for the innocent without cause. That's why they are always up in the sea corner. What do you think they are doing? He says, for idleness teaches much evil. You understand? Read. Let us swallow them up alive as the grave mm -hmm. and hold as those that go down into the pit. I mean, they are planning to kill. That's why they murder, they rob, they steal. If they take your phone and you are, you are resisting, they stab you, you end up dead. Come on. We shall find all precious substance we shall fill our houses with spoil. That goes into stealing. They plan to steal stuff. So it evolves. The evil key just keeps on, keep on evolving. Come on. Cast in thy lot among us. Let us all have one purse. Because now when you start stealing, you start to have one, one purse. You say, listen, whatever we're going to steal, we're going to have one, we're going to have one place where we're going we're gonna to bring the goods to. Eventually, you're going to start fighting over the, the stuff that you've stolen. Why? Because you have the spirit of covetousness. Everybody's not there for the same thing. There's no honor among thieves. Okay, come on. My son, walk not thou in the way with them. Mm -hmm. Refrain thy foot from their path. That's what we read in Proverbs chapter 4. Okay, read Proverbs 4 verse 15. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 15. Actually, you know what? Start at verse 14. Read 14 and 15 together. The book of Proverbs, chapter 4, verse 14. Enter not into the path of the wicked and go not in the way of evil men. Mm -hmm. Avoid it. Pass not by it. Turn from it and pass away. You see what he's saying? He's repeating the same thing that he just said in Proverbs, chapter 1. Okay. Read that part again, verse 15. Go back to Proverbs 1, verse 15. The book of Proverbs, chapter 1, verse 15. My son, Walk not thou in the way with them, mm -hmm. and refrain thy foot from their path. It says, refrain thy foot from their path, because their path is the path of wickedness. 
okay, is on, is only gonna lead you to death and destruction. You know, for their feet run to evil and make haste to shed blood. He says their feet run to evil because their feet run to evil. They are always having evil things. They are always planning to do evil all the time. They are occupied with evil. That's what it really says. You. For their feet run to evil, they are always occupied with evil and make haste to shed blood. Meaning for them, it's easy to kill a man. It's not a, it's a small thing for them to kill a man, to kill a child. They don't care. You understand? Come on. Surely in vain the net is spread in the sight of any bird. Because they are the bird. They are the bird. So surely in vain the net is spread is spread in the sight of any bird. They are the bird. Because remember it says, Thy sons are Satan. They lie at the head of all the sea as a wild bull in a net. They get trapped up in the what? In the system that society has set up. And guess where they end up? They end up in jail. When they come out of jail, they don't know anything else but what? Sad life. Guess where they go? They go back. And then before you know it, they are back in jail. So they are, they'll always be in and out of jail all the time. Okay, come on. And they lay wait for their own blood. They lag privily for their own lives. You see what it says? It says they lay wait for their own blood, meaning for their own people. This is black on black crime. Okay? They lay wait for their own blood. They lay privily. For their own life. Guess what? They end up they and they end up dead as well. Really? So are the ways of everyone that is greedy of gain, mm -hmm. which taketh away the life of the owners thereof. You see that thing? It says, so are the ways of everyone that is greedy of gain. Because that's all that is, that's the only thing that is in their mind. Gain. They are greedy of gain. Whether it's taking somebody's girlfriend, whether it's taking somebody's phone whether it's taking somebody's handbag, whether it's taking somebody's uh, purse and all that, taking somebody's laptop, it does, they are, that's the greediness of the game that they are, they are in the midst of because they are always occupied in evil. Everything they talk about is about how to go and deceive the next man. You understand? Ray? Wisdom crieth without, she uttereth her voice in the streets. No, that's it on that, okay? Watch this. Um, give me, mm, let me see if I want to go there. Give me the book of Isaiah 42. I'm almost done. I'm going to have to do part two of this. Tomorrow I'm going to do part two, Lord will. Okay. I'm going to have to do part two on this. There's a lot of stuff I want to go over. Isaiah 42, verse 22. The book of Isaiah, chapter 42, verse 22. Mm-hmm. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. Come on. They are all of them snared in holes and they are hid in prison houses. They are for a prey and none delivereth for a spoil and none saith restore. So it says they are hid in prison houses because all these young men, they end up in jail. In prison houses. Who's filling up the jail? The black men. Young black men, they are filling up the jail. You go to jail, it's filled up with black men in there. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book of Psalm, chapter 10. Uh, Psalm chapter 10, verse 8. Because when you do evil, you go against God's commandments, this is what's going to be waiting for you. Joining those gangs. Joining the peer pressures. The peer pressures, whether it's girls and boys. You join any of them, you allow some girl next door to take you. Let them, hey man, let's go out, man. Yes, there's a bottle store somewhere. Yes, it's actually you must somewhere somewhere. There's a party. There's, don't be going to those places. Especially you young girls. Very easy to be deceived. You young boys, the same way. You understand? There's no but even a party somewhere. You go there. Guess what ends up happening? Somebody ends up getting raped. Guess what? You find yourself in that situation now. Now the community is gonna look at you. You are a rapist. You see that thing? Simply because you didn't want to follow command. You didn't want to listen to your older sister, to your older brother, your father, your mother. You don't want to listen. Okay? Psalms chapter 10 verse 8. Read that. The book of Psalms chapter 10 verse 8. He sitteth in the lurking places of the villages. You see that thing? In the secret Hold places. On. The villages is Ekasi. That's the villages. You understand? 
He says he teaches in the making places of the villages. Eka, come on. In the secret places does he murder the innocent. Do, what do they do? Murder the innocent. That they murder the innocent. That's why they kill that young girl. They rape the girl. They kill the girl. You understand? They sit, they sit in the lurking places of the villages, each corner. And so once the sun goes down at 7, 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, you, you'll find young men at the street corner, drinking, smoking. What do they do? They be robbing the people. You understand? It says, in secret places that he murdered the innocent. Read on. His eyes are privily set against the poor. Their eyes are, they are privily set against the poor. Read on. He lieth in wait secretly as a lion in his den. Mm -hmm. He lieth in wait to catch the poor. He doth catch the poor when he draweth him into his net. You see that thing? When he draweth him into his net. He says he lieth in wait secretly as a lion in his den. Because what do lions do? They tear, they tear in pieces the prey. That's what these young men do. You understand? That's what they do. And if the girl does not want to, but no, guess what happens? The next day when they see the girl, they end up beating the girl. They end up beating the girl. They end up breaking the girl. That's what happens. They end up killing the girl. Ray. He crouches and humbles himself that the poor may fall by his strong ones. Okay, read that part again. The book of Psalms, chapter 10, verse 10. He crouches and humbles himself that the poor may fall by his strong ones. Usually, a lot of the times, you see these young boys that are doing evil at night, you know, when the sun goes down and they be doing evil. In the morning, you'll never suspect them. When they talk, they talk so soft. You know, you'll never suspect that oh, that brother's the demon right there. You will never suspect. As soon as the, the sun goes down, the demon jumps, the demon comes up. You understand? That's why when a crime goes down, they be like, no, it's Mutana Gaspan No, that one, the one that greets all the time, no, that's the one right there. You understand? Read on. He had no, no. says in his heart. Actually, you know what? Mm, yeah, yeah, read, 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 read verse 11. Book of Psalms, chapter 10, verse 11. He had said in his heart, God has forgotten. He hideth his face, he will never see it. You see that thing? In his mind, he says, no, the Lord has forgotten. The Lord doesn't see what I'm doing. That's the mindset. You understand? That's the mindset. Okay? Watch this. Mm. I'm going to deal with teenage pregnancy, but not today. Okay? Not today. Not today. I've got a couple of things I still want to deal with. I want to deal with diseases, teenage pregnancy, the teenage pregnancy, diseases, drug and drug. I'm going to be dealing with that. Okay. So tomorrow I'm going to do part two of this. I'm going to end the class right here. All right. Um, let's break bread. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had stopped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as oft as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as he eat this bread and drink this cup, he to show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, Many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's give the most high hand for that. All praise to the most high. All praise to the Lord. All praise to the Lord.